Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher, and you're watching The Privacy Guides. I haven't published in a really long time. There's a new wall, a newborn. Things have been really hectic around here. I'll talk about what's been going on in a separate video. But I really wanted to publish this episode promptly, given what's happening in the Bitcoin ecosystem right now and what you can do about it. You may have heard uh, something about Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin Knots and how op return uh, the size of op return is scheduled to be increased early October with V30 from 83 bytes to 100,000 bytes. Uh, so it's a pretty significant change. Uh, op return is used to store arbitrary data alongside a Bitcoin transaction. At 83 bytes, that was very little arbitrary data, such as a hash or maybe some metadata. But when this is increased to 100,000 bytes or 100 kilobytes, that could contain images, which may be CSAM or CP, uh, could contain classified information or malware, all of which uh, will make its way to everyone running a Bitcoin node if that arbitrary data is actually mined into a block. Now, obviously, I imagine miners will not want this to happen, but if anyone successfully mines a block with this stuff on it, it could compromise the integrity of the Bitcoin network as, for instance, a list of spies could be leaked to the entire Bitcoin blockchain and nation state adversaries could stipulate that Bitcoin is compromising national security and that could really jeopardize the integrity of Bitcoin, which in my opinion is the only alternative to, to the current monetary system or monetary policy. Uh, and without making things too ideological, uh, it's a pretty big deal to risk that for increasing op return. I don't really know why Bitcoin Core developers would allow this, but apparently they have, and it's freaking me out and freaking out a lot of others. Bitcoin Mechanics has amazing episodes on this, which I'll link down there in the description. Thank you for advocating for us, Bitcoin Mechanics. Now, what can you do about it? I've been advocating for running a full node, uh, one's personal full node for a very long time. I have a whole guide dedicated to setting things up on a Raspberry Pi. This has been my node for the past many years. It's pretty cool, but very nerdy. It required flashing an operating system onto the hard drive, connecting to it over SSH on your network, configuring things through command line. The guide was very exhaustive. Maybe I'll add it through B-roll. And arguably me and maybe six other people in the world would go down the rabbit hole that much. Um, and now the alternatives, if you wanna run your own full node, are typically buying an appliance uh, such as uh, a Start9 server or maybe an Umbrel. Those appliances are pretty cool, but they're on the expensive side. And even though I believe most of them are open source to some extent, uh, it's pretty opaque as it is a pretty convoluted system with its own operating system, usually Docker containers and all kinds of things. Now, what if there was a third way of running your own full node that yields an amazing amount of privacy and also allows you to signal a preference between core and knots. Uh, well, thankfully there is. Um, I've been down the rabbit hole of Ducker uh, for some time now, and I've created this guide called Bitcoin no Node Ducker, which configures an environment on Apple Silicon devices. I've not left any stone unturned when it comes to privacy and security. It instantiates true Ducker Compose tree services, Electris, Bitcoin D, and Tor. Um, and it does it in a way where each service is isolated from each other and from the internet. Bitcoin D, may be core or not, is only allowed to connect over Malvad running on the host using a SOX5 proxy or via Tor running in its own uh, isolated container. All of these different services talk to each other over a private network that does not have internet connectivity. And using Kalima, I've actually implemented a fail-safe firewall using NF tables that is running at the virtual machine level. Now, uh, all of this is done so that Electrum running on macOS can connect over localhost to Electris. And it's done in a way that 
less technical users can actually do this. So looking at the guide, uh, it talks about what you really need. You need an Apple Silicon Mac running Mac OS and you need an external IPFS encrypted volume. Faster is better. The one that I use is this little device. It's amazing. It's an aluminum enclosure with a built-in uh, USB-C cable that you can plug in and connect uh, to your Mac. This has an NVMe uh, SSD inside. It's a two terabyte and that's really all you need. So you don't really need an appliance. If you have an external hard drive that you can allocate to this project, you probably have all you need to run Node already. Uh, and given how isolated things are, it's actually way more secure than if you were running uh, Bitcoin D on Mac OS, for instance, as again, everything runs within Docker containers that are isolated from each other and from the internet and from the host operating system using a virtual machine. Um, now, you can choose a budget option or if you have a really powerful computer and you want to go through IBD really fast, this little device from uh, OWC is amazing. It supports Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, and trim. Uh, so if you want to go real fast, this device is pretty amazing. I might create a whole episode dedicated to uh, how Mac interfaces with these devices and why some of them get wrecked on under heavier workloads. So hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Now, I won't go through the steps, step by step, of actually running this in the terminal, but if you want me to create a whole dedicated episode to setting this up, let me know. And also I do offer scheduled uh, sessions, which are paid, where I can hold your hand over an encrypted signal call to help you set things up properly. So have a look at that page, I'll link to it in the description. So step one, you clone the repository, then you install Homebrew, then you disable Homebrew Analytics, you install dependencies, you configure Docker using samples. Uh, again, all of those sample files are right here, clear text, you can review them if you want. Um, I've made it so that everything is self-explanatory, uh, but you can also just go down the rabbit hole and, and learn about this, which is pretty exciting, I find. So uh, again, you configure Docker, then you configure Kalima. Kalima is the uh, virtual machine runner on Mac OS. It replaces Docker desktop as an open source alternative, which I really appreciate. Then you configure Kalima, that will set the virtual machine to have two CPUs, four gigs of RAM, and it will create a sparse uh, disk that is two terabytes big uh, or large. And then you copy over the .env, which allows you to set DB cache and max upload target. If you're on an ISP with limited bandwidth, you can set this, for instance, at 500 megabytes a day, so you can participate to the Bitcoin blockchain uh, without uh, it just sucking all your bandwidth out. Then usage is super simple. We recommend uh, using Malvad for the initial block download. This is not sponsored by Malvad in any way. If you use Malvad, it will cost you about five euros for one month, after which you can switch to Tor. And that's actually what we recommend. We recommend using Tor outbound only profiles if you're over cellular networks, if you're on the go and you've brought your little hard drive and you wanna broadcast a transaction from say a safety deposit box uh, location, you can. Uh, and then we recommend using the Tor profile at home uh, after the initial block download has completed. Now you may wanna run Core or not. Uh, that's really up to you. This project supports both. All you have to do is choose the profile that you run, uh, that you want. For initial block download, this is the one that I personally use. And then this is the one that I use to uh, run my node once the initial block download has completed, making sure that all my transactions are broadcasted over Tor, which really yields the highest level of privacy one can have. So this project is super exciting to me because for one thing, running this is very nerdy. It requires additional hardware. If you travel, you need to make sure you can access it uh, over you know, the internet. When this boots, I really loved this T7 Touch device. I have a whole episode dedicated to it. It's being deprecated. That allowed me to have full disk encryption, but if there was a power outage, I had to enter my credentials so it would fall offline. Using this as an alternative, I can bring this with me wherever I go and access my node or also just 
use it when need be. So I usually synchronize it every now and then. When my computer is idle, sometimes I let it run to participate to the Bitcoin blockchain. And running knots versus core is a way to signal to the world that you're part of that movement, that you're participating on the Bitcoin blockchain and you're signaling that you do not want op return to be increased to 100 uh, kilobytes. And that is a pretty powerful way of participating. Now, all of that said, if that's not enough, the reason why running your own full node is mission critical for privacy is that when you run Electrum using public nodes, the way it works under the hood is Electrum will elect one uh, external node as your main node to which all of your addresses will be sent to pull in balances. What that means is if an adversary is running Bitcoin analytics as a public node and is able to cross correlate any transaction with KYC, such as purchasing Bitcoin on an exchange, that public node that is adversarial has just de-anonymized your entire holding. That is crazy. I just don't understand why more people are not running full nodes, except for the fact that it was very overwhelming. So this project, which by the way, you can totally star on GitHub if you appreciate it, is a way of doing this on your Mac <clears throat> without having to understand how SSH works and how all of this crazy stuff works and without having to purchase any additional hardware except a two terabyte external hard drive. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully a lot of us will start signaling knots versus core and hopefully the Bitcoin core team will roll back that change because really the integrity of the Bitcoin network is worth so much more than being able to pump garbage into transactions uh, using op return. So that's all I have for today. I'll be back uh, hopefully shortly. I don't wanna promise anything, um, having a kid is really wild um, and it really changes things, but I'm getting more and more uh, energy back. So I'm excited to be sharing more. I have a whole bunch of things that I'm super pumped to share. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.